Well, it's eight o'clock in the morning and our favourite flying carpet has just turned up. Seems to have had a bit of a paint job on it since the last time we used it. Oh, it could be a new one. We'll find out. Um, today's mission, we are on high bay lighting. There's a job we've been meaning to get round to for ages, and that's changing some of those old fittings over to LED. We've got this Philips core line. It's the Gen 5, and it's got this special sensor on that we'll come back to later, and hopefully it's gonna make our lives easier and save us lots of energy. But until then, let's crack on. There's the first problem, Rick. Mud on the newly painted floor. So just look at our existing installation we've got here. We've got two really old fixtures that we never use. Those old discharge fixtures, really annoying because they uh, re-strike and warm up time and awful light. So much so we've uh, taped the switch off so we never use them. The other two fittings up there are LED. Uh, from the Gen 4 range uh, that we've looked at previously on the channel. Now, you might be thinking, uh, why are we going to change them? They don't have any sensors on them. And the big problem we've got here is we work between two units and uh, everyone forgets to switch the lights off. So we're going to try and save energy by moving to these new fixtures with the sensor. So Rick's going to crack on and take the old fittings out, including the LED ones, uh, because we need the connector that's on the end of them to fit to the new fixtures before we put them up. So here's a quick top tip when it comes to using flying carpets, especially when you're in a public space, as I'll learn to my expense at the Cleveland Centre in Middlesbrough, local rapscallions think it's funny to come along and take the key out and run off. Uh, so Rick's about to learn that powerful lesson. Uh, we'll go and have a cup of tea, Joe. Oi, what are you doing? Well, I know how it works at eFix, so that's why I brought the Makita coffee machine with me. That's ever seen a brew. Looks like we've had a near miss when the roofers were up uh, replacing the roofing sheets. Before we take the last of the LED fittings down, this has been up here for about two years, which gives us an opportunity to explore dust because that's actually the biggest factor when it comes to lumen depreciation in a lighting installation. And people have kind of forgotten that sometimes with LEDs that uh, because we're not going up to change lamps, we also forget to clean the fitting. So let's just see how much dust is on this one. We've got our uh, multi-purpose wipes here. There's a lot of dust on the back because this used to be a joinery factory. If you look at the old things, there's masses of dust on the back of them. But if I give this a wipe over over here, there's actually not much dust on the front. I think that's a great design on these things. So a lot of these LED things, sometimes the front optics, they look a bit like an alien landscape. Um, and obviously dust gets trapped in there and reduces the light output. But with this one, nice and smooth, and doesn't seem to have been a problem. But if we look on the back, wow, there's loads. And it's also all over Rick as well. Now, we will recycle these fittings in our other unit that's still got some old fluorescent fittings in there. Now, just out of curiosity, since we've got an old discharge fitting here, I thought I'd try the Philips Trueforce Core LED road lamp that we featured in a previous video, just to see it works in this type of fitting. Now, I'm taking out a 250 watt lamp. Now, there's no way this would replace that in terms of light output. This is suitable for 100 watts and takes it down to 40 and you would be better to strip out all the control gear to keep your power factor and get optimum efficiency. But let's just see if it works. Be most careful, this is a glass-based product. Uh, obviously, the best way is always to go for a new fitting and you get benefit from all those optics and higher efficiency. But does this work? Yes, it does. So there's a, a great way to quickly save energy if you uh, don't want to be changing fittings. Much better than those corn lamps that you see out there. So I'll get the nice easy job while Rick's doing that of wiring these fittings up. Let's get one out of the box. Uh, what have we got in here? We've got the fixture itself. Uh, again, with this sensor that we'll come back to at the end. And the cardboard in the packaging, which is good. First job, I'll just fit the uh, bracket to the back of the fitting. It comes with this U bracket, which just bolts in place on the back. Uh, the previous version just had the hook that you put in there. I guess that comes as an optional accessory, depending on how you're going to mount them. Uh, I don't know whether they've done that because obviously the, the fittings at one side will like, cause the fitting to tilt. It's not very, uh, not very heavy, so I wouldn't have thought so, but we shall just go with what we've got for now. I'll just drop the washer on the floor. 
Rick might have his uh, coffee machine, but I've got the heated jacket. Nice and warm and cosy here. All right, so I'm following the instructions. There's torque settings for this. So three newton meters for the bolt. Now for the wiring itself. So the great thing, you don't have to open these fittings up. You've just got this inline connector. So I'll just take the back off. And we're going to wire that to uh, the existing click socket that we've got in the fixed wiring that uh, Eddie Clemens put in for us when he uh, rewired the unit a while ago, a couple of years ago, when we put these fittings up there. Don't forget to put this on the cable. Oh, I can tell you, you can actually put it on after you've put the uh, ferrules on. Instructions. Too quick here, Rick. I'm going to slow on the job up now. A few of the interesting things uh, about this fixture. Um, it's IP65 rated. Obviously, that's great for environments where there's lots of dust. Obviously, our connector that we're fitting here at the end isn't uh, IP rated, but the inline one is. A uh, great feature on Philips products that we have covered before is this service tag here. So, for instance, imagine the situation where an electrician has lost the instructions and you haven't got a clue what this fixture was, uh, or you want to do some maintenance or buy additional fixtures. You just scan this little service tag here and it provides you all the information about the fixture. Great piece of design. Again, nice surface with smooth optics, so we're not likely to get uh, dust buildup on there. Um, you know, robust design, little breather vent in there as well. So again, great little features to see to help uh, prevent uh, condensation build up inside the fixture. And this thick, this sensor here that we'll come on to later on, including a little mask you can put on to blank out parts of the PIR if you need to. Now the sensor itself has got uh, daylight sensing as well. So again, think of those energy savings, because although we think of LED, this fixture is 134 watts, 20,000 lumens, so efficient, but obviously if you've got lots of them in a warehouse, being able to reduce that with uh, sensors and dim them down depending on light levels, obviously adds loads more to the energy saving. We've finished our electrical installation. That's pretty simple, just like any other light fitting. And we've packed off the access equipment. That's gone because I'm reliably informed we will not need to get back up to the sensors, the push buttons or twiddle dials when it comes to setting up the lighting controls. We can do all of that through the Interact Pro smartphone app, and we don't even need an internet connection to do that. It's all done through Bluetooth, which makes the setup process easy because a lot of industrial sites, they get a little bit nervous when you say that you need to attach equipment to their uh, network just to set up a lighting control system. So let's give it a little try and step through how we can do that and some of the features on this app. So I've set up five scenes in addition to the automatic one that just uses the sensors on the fittings. Now, you don't often think about scene setting in an industrial space, but it can reflect obviously the task that's happening in the room, but also the potential to save energy. So for instance, I've created a preparing scene which actually reduces the lights to 73%. So we don't need a huge amount of light when we're just getting things ready on the bench, fixing stuff to the wall, but then when we're ready to shoot a video, we can go up to 100% and then we've got full output power. Perhaps at night, uh, we want to create a more dramatic scene or just basically move around the building. I've created a scene that dims the lights down to 32% or as we're leaving the building late at night, we might just need one light on by the door. I've got a security setting there. Now, when we're live streaming, uh, we might want a few of the lights off because that causes us uh, problems when it comes to cameras. So we need a slightly different setup. So in the live stream setting, two of the lights are dimmed to a very low level and two of the other lights stay at a high level. Now, the great thing about this system is the flexibility. I can quickly reconfigure it to match the needs should we move things around 
or we need specific light settings for a particular task. Now we started this story really wanting to save energy and our biggest problem wasn't scene setting, it's people leaving the building and leaving the lights on. And that's where the power of this system really kicks in. You can set up how the control system works through the app as well. You could have manual on and off if obviously uh, sensors sometimes can cause problems in a space and you want to override them. We've gone for uh, manual on, so that is using a light switch to trigger uh, the lights themselves and then the sensors detecting when nobody's uh, in the space. So that's sometimes known as absence detection or you can have fully automatic on and off based on occupancy, obviously known as occupancy uh, detection. And you can further link in daylight linking. So if we open the door and we want to maintain a constant light output level, the sensors would pick up the amount of daylight coming into the room and adjust the lights accordingly. And obviously being in Skipton, we get tons of light coming in through the skylights as well. And those sensors will also compensate for natural light coming in through there as well. It can also trim the high end of the lights as well. So for instance, you've done a lighting design and you've probably, well, you might've got the calculations wrong and you need to actually just trim the amount of light in a space to achieve a particular lux level. Uh, you can do that with the high end trim function as well. That's also pretty good for an installation as it gets older. You might have dust build up on fixtures and you don't want to clean them. You can manually adjust the light level to the maximum setting and make that adjustment. And again, that unlocks further energy savings. Now I mentioned a switch to trigger the lights when we come into the building, but we haven't actually seen any switches apart from our traditional ones there. In this interact system, you can easily add wireless switches and program exactly what those switches do. Uh, this one's battery free uh, and I'll probably stick it around here, obviously conveniently located by the door uh, for our setup. And it's obviously got the obvious on off function, but you can also select scenes as well. And again, you can change all of that within the app as well. Now the ability to set up this sophisticated system with just a smartphone, I think is absolutely fantastic. But for larger installations, or you've got clients who want to monitor their energy in more granular detail, you can still add a hub to the system and get all of that important reporting data on the cloud-based platform as well. And obviously monitor, control, and even change systems without even going to the building itself. The combination of the Philips Coreline Generation 5 high bay fixtures and the Interact Pro control system are incredibly simple to set up, producing great energy savings and flexibility that we need in industrial environments. Now, if you want faster energy savings, you haven't got the budget for a whole fixture replacement, you might have been a little bit intrigued by this True Force Core LED road lamp we showed early in the video. If you want to know more about that, check out this video here.